Here's a strange paradox. The Bible is the best-selling, but possibly the least read best-selling book in the world. On today's program, we'll investigate some remarkable facts found in the Bible that you may never have heard of. Some of these truths even have an impact on the important matter of salvation. Stay tuned for a fascinating look at your Bible. From the time of the Messiah to our modern technological age, much Bible truth has been lost. With the melding of foreign philosophies and teachings unknown to the believers of the first century, the early church began a transformation away from its Hebrew origins. The question we need to ask ourselves is, just how far did it go? Join us for the next half hour as we take you on an incredible journey of biblical understanding as we uncover the foundation of the Christian faith. Are you ready to discover the truth? How much do you really know about the Bible? How much of what you know is actual fact and not simply tradition or hearsay? Today we'll take an eye-opening journey to discover some remarkable and essential facts found in the Bible that amazingly are unfamiliar to most Bible believers. Unbeknownst to popular acceptance, many truths once universally honored by Bible believers have been abandoned through time. This includes both scriptural truths as well as facts of secular history, and sometimes even both at the same time. Consider this. Although not as popular as it once was, April Fool's Day, as we know it, is when people play tricks on one another. Seen as harmless fun, few really know why they celebrate it. In fact, its historic origins defy the whimsy of this celebration. Back in 1582, when today's worldwide Gregorian calendar was put into practice to correct some deficiencies in the old Julian calendar, a decision was made to switch the start of the year from its Bible-based origins in early April to January 1st. Some of those living in 1582 either didn't get the memo or simply refused to make the switch to the new calendar and its year. They were ridiculed and called April Fools for not changing their springtime New Year's Day. To which we ask, which is more foolish, starting the new year in January 1st in the dead of winter or to begin the new year in the warmth of spring when everything is coming alive and turning green the way the biblical calendar does. The vestiges of the old calendar are evident in the names of our months. September means seven in Latin, but in actuality it is the ninth month. October means eight, but it's the tenth. November means nine, but it's the eleventh. And December means ten, but it's the twelfth. So why do we have leap years tacked on into February? Because in the ancient calendar, February was the last month of the year. And so was the logical month best to manipulate the calendar and line up with the seasons. Therefore, March was originally the first month of the year the way the Bible shows it to be. And this fact has biblical origins. It is nothing short of amazing what often happens to facts over a span of time. Let's look at a few common beliefs most often accepted as true, but which have no basis in the scripture. Many can quote Harry Potter or Shakespeare, but millions of churchgoers are oblivious to what the book of their salvation actually teaches, especially when it comes to their savior. They don't know when he came, why he came, and what actually he taught while on earth. Maybe you didn't realize that the Bible nowhere reveals the day or even month he was born in. Nowhere is December 25 mentioned in Scripture. There are a number of errors in the typical manger scene as well. The Bible never says that there were just three wise men, only that there were three kinds of gifts the wise men gave. And these wise men brought their gifts not to a manger, but to the house the Messiah and his family were living in up to two years later. In fact, Herod killed all the children up to two years of age in hopes of snaring the young child in his murderous edict. These facts are easily provable in your Bible. All you need to do is simply read the account of his birth. So let's read the account in Matthew 2, verse 9. 
When they, speaking of the wise men, had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. These truths and many others have been in plain sight for centuries in the pages of the scriptures. Yet they've gone almost entirely unnoticed or ignored in favor of traditional error. This is nothing short of incredible. If you think about it, why adhere to error when you have the truth right in front of you? Perhaps one of the problems many have with actually reading and studying the Bible today is this. Perhaps rather than understanding it as a guide to life, too often the Bible is seen only as a talisman of sorts, an object to hold in one's hands when attending a wedding or a funeral. Maybe the book just looks good as an embellishment on the coffee table or living room bookshelf. And what better than a family Bible to document births, weddings, and anniversaries? But as everyone should know, it's what's inside the book that counts. Just holding the book in your hands will not give you preferred status in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh, not any more than believing that warming a pew in church every week will have a great impact on one's salvation. The desire to follow the truth in one's heart is what matters, and to do that, we must know what the Word says. How many people can say they really study the Bible? How many have analyzed it verse by verse, comparing various translations and consulting study helps, looked at the text in the ancient Hebrew and Greek languages, done a systematic analysis of and between verses, comparing one with another, as well as made a comprehensive analysis of Old and New Testaments? Well, few have the time, the motivation, or the skill to dig that deeply into the Word. And because of that, a lot of Bible misteachings have gone unchallenged. Too many are willing to leave their spiritual understanding to someone else. Too many are satisfied to put the most important matter of life, their personal salvation, into the hands of someone like a pastor or spiritual mentor. But it will do them little good on the day of judgment that they do not act on their faith with a sincere heart that seeks above everything else to walk in truth. The Bible says the day of judgment will be just you and your Creator, face to face, and your life will be up for review. Ecclesiastes 12.14 reads, For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Each of us will be judged by what we do in this life, and we are well advised to know what our judge expects of us, and that can come only with knowledge of his word. Gaps or errors in understanding are indefensible, and each of us needs a clear grasp of the Bible and what it teaches, because the duty of each believer is to put into practice what is learned. 2 John 6 tells us, and this is love, that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Our booklet, Astonishing Bible Truths That Your Church Never Taught, reveals much more of what we're talking about today and details critical teachings that have a bearing on your salvation, like... Why worship on the first day of the week when the fourth commandment, among many other scriptural mandates, clearly teaches that the seventh day is the Sabbath? There is simply no New Testament support for a change in the weekly Sabbath, and the Savior and His followers all worshiped on the seventh day. Why? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why observe holidays nowhere found in the pages of the Bible and ignore those observances that are commanded over and over in the Word? And how can anyone say that the Old Testament has no relevance when it was the very Bible used by the Savior, His disciples, and the early New Testament believers? It was the only Bible they had, as the New Testament had not even been written yet. If the Old Testament was good enough for them, 
why not for us as well? Get the answers to these and many more provocative questions in the free booklet, Astonishing Truths That Your Church Never Taught. Request it online through postal mail or by phone, and that information will be shown on your screen. Many Bible believers today have been taught doctrines and dogmas that are not found in the Bible. Have you ever wondered where the immortal soul belief came from? If the modern church has its roots in Judaism, then why do Jews worship on Saturday and Christians on Sunday? Why and where did the change take place? Where did the holiday of Easter come from? Is it a biblically sanctioned holy day? Does it really matter if paganism crept into our modern beliefs and practices? Do all roads really lead to salvation? If you have these questions, then you need to write for the free booklet, Astonishing Bible Truths That Your Church Never Taught. Write to Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043, or call area code 573-896-896. 9248 or read this and many more booklets online at yrm.org that's www.yrm.org today errors are widely accepted and allowed to continue myths about the scriptures abound false teachings are legion and in anticipation of what we are told in the scriptures themselves to study, to show ourselves approved, we find in 2 Timothy 2.15, we must dig out the truth. For salvation's sake, we must be able to rightly divide the word of truth. We're all born into a ready-made world, and unless we challenge the commonly held perceptions and beliefs, many of which are replete with error, we will never get past the faulty ideas that have solidified like concrete in popular understanding. To grasp just how easily and frequently false notions about the Bible have become accepted, consider the following that are universally acknowledged as fact, yet easily disproved simply by reading what the Bible really says. No deep, involved study necessary, just some time spent reading the Word itself. Because of centuries of myth, most share the belief that the condemned will live forever suffering the agonies of hellfire. But that's simply not true. The wicked will be destroyed in the lake of fire and cease to exist. Revelation 20 verse 15 tells us this, The belief in eternal punishing with no hope of release was popularized by the 13th century Italian poet Dante Alighieri in his work The Divine Comedy. Yet his ideas have zero support in the scriptures. It's enlightening to discover what the Bible says if you just read it. Were you aware that the Jews and Israel are not all the same people as most have been led to believe? Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, had his name changed to Israel after he wrestled with an angel. Israel had 12 sons who became the 12 tribes of Israel. Only one of those tribes became the Jews, a name that derives from Jacob's fourth son, Judah. So therefore, all Jews are Israelites, but not every Israelite is a Jew. Only one of the 12 tribes of Israel is Jewish. Many make the mistake in saying things like, oh, the Old Testament is Jewish. Oh, it's only for Jews, and that's false. There were 11 other tribes of Israel camped at the foot of Mount Sinai to whom the commandments were also given. And those 11 other Israelite tribes were not Jews. In fact, in 1 Kings 12, 21, we find Israel at war with the Jews. We read, And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of ben Benjamin and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. What does this imply for you and me? Well, for one thing, if Israel includes more than just Jews, it means that the commands given to Moses to pass down to the Israelites was passed down, were passed down to more than just Jews. 
In fact, the heavenly commands were given to all the tribes gathered at Sinai, and that includes everyone today. Ecclesiastes 12.13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Notice it doesn't say the whole duty of Jews. It is not just the duty of Jews to obey, but all mankind. That the law is in effect today is confirmed in the New Testament book of Acts. The Apostle Luke in Acts 7.38 tells us, What Moses received on Mount Sinai is to be ours as well. He writes, This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Now, oracles is the Greek logion, and it means utterances from on high. It's the same law that was thundered from the mouth of Yahweh to Moses on the mountain that is also given to us. While on the subject of Moses on Sinai, the Bible reveals that the law, including the Ten Commandments, was in full force and effect long before Moses received the tablets on Sinai. In fact, the book of Genesis shows that the law was in effect from the beginning of creation. The Sabbath, detailed in the fourth commandment, was created on the seventh day by Yahweh's own rest on that day, completing the creation week. That Sabbath rest is a memorial of creation and a sign that those who keep it are his true people, according to Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. Cain was guilty of murder, which is violating the sixth commandment. He also lied about his crime, breaking the ninth commandment against false witnessing. Genesis 4, 7 says he sinned. The only way one can sin is if a law is broken, because sin by definition itself is the breaking of the law, 1 John 3, 4. Romans 4, 15 says, Where there is no law, there is no transgression. We also know the law was in effect before Moses at Sinai because Noah was told to bring both clean and unclean animals onto the ark. He had to know which was which, a fact that is spelled out in the law in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Incidentally, only the unclean beasts went aboard in pairs. The clean animals went in by seven. Ham, one of the sons of Noah, dishonored his father in Genesis 9, which means that he violated the fifth commandment about honoring your father and mother. But we have much more. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Who has ascended into heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Most students of the Bible have been taught that what is found in the Old Testament is not intended for them, but is intended for the Jews, while the New Testament is intended for Christians. The viability of the Old Testament is one of the most significant truths you will learn about proper biblical worship. 
Here is what the Messiah had to say about the early writings. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? To receive your free copy of the booklet, The Old Testament Lives, call 573-896-9248 or write Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043. You can also read this and many more booklets online at our website, www.yrm.org. So many have the notion that the law was given at Sinai first, and that's simply not true. There are laws against fornication and adultery in Genesis, as well as laws of parental authority, and Sinai didn't come until Exodus 20. The law was codified on Mount Sinai to bring these statutes to man in written form, more durable and more solid than they had had before. It was not the first time Israel had heard of them, however. Society was not lawless before Israel got to Sinai. If it had been, no one would have survived because laws are essential for basic structure, order, and safety of any civilization. Without laws, you have anarchy, mayhem, and complete social breakdown. Well, we can help you to understand the importance of the Old Testament as the basis of modern faith in our free booklet, The Old Testament Lives. Many calling themselves New Testament churches say they have no use for the Old Testament. But what Bible did the writers of their New Testament quote from, refer to, and base their teachings on? It's time to rethink some critically important fundamentals. Most students of Scripture have been taught that what is found in the Old Testament is actually intended not for them, but just for Jews while the New Testament is off-limits to Jews and is approved only for Christian use. Still, no one can explain why Christian Bible publishers continue to bind the Old and New Testament scriptures into a single volume, as they have done for centuries. If the Old has been obsolete for 2,000 years, then why not just drop it? Clearly, something fundamentally important has kept these two Testaments together for 2,000 years. Well, write for our free booklet, The Old Testament Lives, and we'll send it to you free of charge on request. Understanding the New Testament begins with simply believing what it says. The New Testament was not against the precepts of the Old Testament, as many think. Our Savior, Yahshua, rejects the common notion out of hand when he says in Matthew 5.17, Don't think that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets, but what is taught from pulpits throughout the land that he came to destroy the law? They claim obedience is works righteousness, that obeying the one you pray to, honor, and worship is legalism. Exactly what the Son of Yahweh himself said it is not. In fact, he said we will be judged by his laws. Many believe the purpose of his mission to earth was to trash the law of his father that was given in the Old Testament as if it were one huge mistake. The problem with that is, he himself said he came to magnify his father's laws. He actually raised the bar. He made the statutes of the Old Testament even more binding, not less. He said in Matthew 5 that without actually committing the act, that if you just think about committing sin, that you are guilty of sin in your heart. He in fact lived by his father's laws as an example for us. Obeying frees us from sin and its penalty, and that's a good thing not the evil that so many have been hoodwinked into believing. 30, 40 years ago, most people readily understood that evil was sin. But today, many have been misled. 1 Timothy 4 tells us, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Interesting terminology there. The Bible is a user's manual for our lives. It's meant to be read and followed as the creator of mankind intended. 
One day everyone will be judged by the scriptures. Revelation chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Notice how important it is for works to be righteous. Revelation 20 verse 13 says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. It would behoove us to know what the Bible teaches us, if it will be our judgment standard. Certainly to, to understand what it says now is very important, and to follow what it says if that is going to be the standard of what we are judged by. Well, that's all the time we have today. Join us again at this time next time, and don't forget the two free booklets offered today. The one, Astonishing Bible Truths, that your church never taught, and also the other, The Old Testament Lives. Just ask for the Astonishing Booklet and the Old Testament Booklet. We'll know what you mean. You'll be surprised when you start reading these booklets by what you have been missing. May Yahweh bless you. For the free literature offered on today's program, write to Yahweh's Restoration Ministry, care of Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043. You can phone in your request to area code 573-896-9248. Don't forget to ask the operator about obtaining a free MP3 CD, which contains numerous sermons on many different topics. You can also visit our website at www.yrm.org for extensive study articles and online offers for free literature, CDs, and DVDs. We thank you for watching today. Join us again next week and discover the truth at this same time and station.